an uh, introduction. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, it's an open secret that uh, entrepreneurship and startup policies have an extremely vital role in uh, the development of a nation, um, particularly in fast developing countries like uh, India. Uh, these policies are very critical and important for, particularly for the innovators, entrepreneurs, and the startups, uh, especially in the overcoming the initial barriers, while at the same time uh, trying to market uh, their innovation from scratch to uh, scale. Uh, the higher educational institutes uh, in general, and particularly technical institutes, in, uh, they, where a large section of young talents are there. Um, they are pursuing their academic or other uh, journey. These, uh, they play an imperative role in the entrepreneurship movement uh, in, a, in a country like ours. Uh, the Ministry of Human Resource Development, uh, Government of India is uh, also making uh, every possible effort to drive innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, and uh, as you all know, taking part in this initiative, uh, the institutions, our, our institutions, uh, innovation cell, Council has uh, been organizing seminars and webinars. <laughs> An initiative on ideation and feasibility uh, study has also been started. And uh, we'll be hearing that uh, more on that uh, from a superb expert in the field, Professor Pranab Kumar Dan from uh, the IIT Kharagpur, who is the entrepreneurship sale and the Rajendra Mishra School of Entrepreneurship. And uh, I think. Um, we should, um, I should hand over the mic to our anchor. Where is our anchor? Where is our anchor? De Deepa Roy, please start the session. Hello. Ah. Deepa, start. Hello. Yes, yes. We can hear you. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. yes. A very good evening to respected principal, Dr. N.C. Ghosh, our guest speaker, Dr. Pranav Kumar Dhan, respected faculty members, and all my dear friends present on the other side of the screen. Institutions Innovation Council, BIT presents today's webinar on design thinking and affordable innovation, a trajectory in entrepreneurship. Thereby, I, Deepa Roy from CSE First Year, would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to this wonderful session. Now, I would like to call Dr. Saurav Nanti Sarkar, Startup Coordinator of IICBIT, to deliver a speech. Well, I have already uh, delivered sir? my speech. Yes. I think uh, Professor Please call uh, uh, Dr. Ghosh. Ghosh. Yes. Uh, may, Thank uh, you, sir. Now, I would request our principal, sir, Professor Dr. N.C. Ghosh, to say a few words to commence the session. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, simply formalities because uh, uh, I could uh, hear Professor Dan's uh, discussion. Uh, uh, his suggestions. I have taken note of uh, all the points, and I will see that these are getting materialized in time to come. So I heartily welcome Dr. Dan uh, from IIT Kharagpur. He is associate professor in Rajendra Mishra School of Engineering and Entrepreneurship. Uh, the interesting thing is, in in his uh, talk, the uh, the uh, the title is Design Thinking and Affordable Innovation. So when uh, sometimes we say that, OK, design thinking and innovation, but he, he has mentioned affordable, the word affordable. This is very important because ultimately, whatever we design, whatever we think, and whatever we uh, bring out in the form of product, it should be affordable to the people, the users. So uh, I heartily welcome you, sir. Uh, and it's uh, nice that uh, I was a student of IIT Kharagpur in the year 1981 to 1984. So, so, uh, so definitely when someone uh, going to give a talk on uh, some some topic, I get myself a little bit, uh, you know, miss, to welcome someone. I have some friends there now; they are faculties. Uh, anyway, uh, this is not the platform to talk about this. So uh, I welcome all our say IAC member and also the president of IAC, Dr. Orpita Chakraborty, then Devolina Barik, then uh, Shoban Nandi, and of course, uh, Mr. Today's uh, main coordinator, you can say, who has coordinated the talk, it is Dr. Shorab Sharkar. And all others, and also I I welcome my students from the BIT because ultimately whatever will percolate, whatever will translate, you are the beneficiary. We'll only get some knowledge from Dr. Dan, but ultimately the benefits will come to the students. So whatever uh, we are doing for uh, for the kind information of uh, Dr. Pranav Kumar Dan, that my uh, college IAC 
Institutions Innovation Council is doing wonderful work. Uh, you can say in every week they are organizing one uh, entrop uh, one uh, talk from resource person and experts. So that is how uh, we are uh, giving the benefit of all resource person to our students. So uh, our students are that way lucky that you are going to give a talk on this aspect. So these words without going further, I heartily, once again, I heartily welcome uh, Dr. Dhan uh, for his talk. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, sir, for your word of wisdom and encouragement. I would like to call Dr. Arpita Chakraborty, ma'am, president of IICBIT, to say something. Thank you, Deepa. Thank you, principal, sir, for your appreciating words. Yes, uh, as we are all aware, this IIC Institutions Innovation Council, it's a Ministry of Education's initiative. As Ministry of Education, MOE are putting constant emphasis to entrepreneurship and startup. With that vibe in our mind, BIT is always trying to create some programs for this startup and entrepreneurship to encourage the young minds so that this innovation gets deep rooted in our education system also. Uh, just a few days back, we have already organized a program on business idea presentation competition. Then in the upcoming event, as an upcoming event, we are having a program on business idea presentation. It's not a competition, but uh, many of our faculties are coming enthusiastically. They are submitting their uh, business ideas and students also are putting their effort to put the business ideas. It's very encouraging. And I would request all of you, if you have ideas, please put come forward and submit your ideas. Uh, so that uh, innovation can be taken to the farther level. Definitely innovation, this uh, buzzword, we all, uh, every day we hear this word innovation. So innovation should be not only the old technology based, rather it should be future projective disruptions so that we go for agility, right? Uh, not only maintaining the uh, existing things, we should go for innovative new, new things to reach to the newer levels. And design thinking is of course a process of this uh, uh, startup, uh, startup and entrepreneurship process. And today we are very lucky that we are having an eminent speaker um, Dr. P. K. Dan from IIT KGP Kharagpur. So we would be uh, loving to hear from Sir. So with this uh, brief note, uh, I would uh, like to welcome you all, my dear students, my dear colleagues, uh, Principal Sir, our guest speaker, and of course today we are also feeling lucky that we are having participants from uh, Bodhicharya School, Sakwat Memorial School, as well as uh, uh, Bodhisha High School also. So welcome you all in today's webinar, and hope we'll be enjoying this encouraging session and uh, in informative session definitely. With this brief note, I would uh, hand over this uh, to Deepa. Over to you, Deepa. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. It's a great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for today, Professor Pranav Kumar Dhan from the Rajendra Mishra School of Engineering Entrepreneurship, IIT Kharagpur. Dr. Dhan has a long history of industrial experience with organizations like General Electric Co. of India Limited, GECL Storm Limited, India Foils Limited with Williamson Magar Group, etc in senior positions, an alumni from the Indian Institute of Engineering Science and Technology, Shippur, Professor Dan embodies the spirit of research, excellence, and industry collaboration, as is obvious from the large list of publications in renowned journals. His current research interests center around engineering design, product development, and manufacturing, and the study of product development and realization process and systems. It is indeed a wonderful opportunity to have Sir today amongst us. Over to you, Sir. Thank you. Well, um, thank you very much. Um, and um, my thanks to the authorities of uh, BIT Kolkata, uh, including um, uh, Professor Ghosh, Professor Sharkar, and Dr. Chakraborty. I perhaps am not able to take everybody's name because um, uh, I have not interacted so far. So uh, whoever I know, I have you know, spoken uh, about them. Uh, and of course, my dear students, only thing that after uh, uh, just a couple of minutes back, I heard that some school students are also here. So I thought it is for the BIT college and uh, the engineering graduates and uh, the students are the target audience, but now I understand some school students are there. Uh, only thing then I have to improvise on the spot as to how I frame my lecture because um, I, I prepared it for engineering graduate students. So how many school students are here that if I can know then, because um, all right, I will try and um, put it in, um, in a way that, you know, which classes are they are from? Which class in the Thank this? You, sir, I beg to interrupt you. Uh -huh. Actually, sir, uh, IIC's uh, mentor mentee program is there. So according to that program, the schools are associated with that college also. So we have invited the faculties of those schools actually. Oh, sir, faculties, acha, acha, acha. Yeah, I, they're okay. The faculties of the school. Yes. Uh, acha, acha. Not the school students. I don't think the students have joined. Okay, fine, 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 fine. All right, all right, all right. Fine, great. Uh, all right, fine. So uh, um, I am not uh, presenting my you know, introductory slide because that would be nothing but a you know, waste of time because already it is 7.15. So kindly let me know actually when I have to close. That's very important because um, 
accordingly i will um, proceed i do i know that closing time is 8 o'clock but if i have to maintain 8 o'clock so i will finish at 7:50 um all right and because there will be 10 minutes for question and answer unless there is any other uh, directive from your side i would adhere to that time limit and therefore i have to be a little brief um but okay um, i have prepared certain uh, uh, slides and um, um i would uh, i would just uh, present them in a very quick manner uh, not necessarily that you have to um look at every slide and uh, read every sentence it is not really necessary i would be talking but the slides would be um a kind of a helping tool that would take the flow forward uh, as i speak um so i would like to share the screen and would begin uh, from a just share okay share hmm. Hmm. can you see my slide yes sir okay okay Uh, so i am skipping the first slide i am straight away going to the second slide because the first slide is nothing but introduction however uh, so just let me see if i can put it in uh, the um uh, okay, this is oh the band is here so what to do if i have to make it full screen here in zoom what is the mechanism because the band appears on top and uh, there i actually cannot see any other thing there okay just let me see okay slide so show if i all right let me try this okay yeah from current side now i think it is better you can see this full screen right yes sir it? yes okay sir. fine great good all right fine so i'm putting it back there all right now see with uh, i'll start um, uh, enter into the discussion there um uh, many students often ask uh, and ask us this question that that if we pursue a career in innovation or entrepreneurship how does it help uh, whether it has a, it would help in our career and all because now it is uh, different uh, you know skill sets are uh, being sought after and people are you know preparing for those skill set developing those skill sets etc but whether the you know immersing in innovation and entrepreneurship activities would be of help so that's the question is always posed before us and similarly i hope that this question is there on many students minds uh students i would like to tell you here the session is yours um so uh, try to get maximized um take away from the talk and therefore uh, you can put your queries in the chat box um maybe uh, depending on the you know type of question etc um the coordinator may ask this question during my speech itself during my talk itself you, you one doesn't have to necessarily wait till i finish because the validity of the question may not remain or currency of the question may not remain till then and you may miss the thread so please feel free to ask questions um that's it now uh basically i would like to tell you that there is a term called entrepreneur which um, is a very common term these days you have Uh, possibly hard the term called entrepreneur but entrepreneur is also a term which means that those entre people with entrepreneurial mindset are working in corporate organizations uh, and also startups you know, where they are working uh, with innovative uh, attitude and approach and ideas um and it has gained so much of you know popularity now or impact also now that uh, the global institute of entrepreneurship has been created and they regularly publish articles focusing on uh, renowned entrepreneurs and you can see that the you know uh, cover pages of those journal but my main objective of placing this um this slide is to uh, show you these three bubbles uh, that are present here that shows that they on one extreme on the right bubble you find that there are entrepreneurs um and on the uh, left it is entrepreneurs uh both are um there where entrepreneurs take more risk and uh, enjoy greater freedom and uh, entrepreneurs okay and since they are within the corporate um, organization their risk is limited and so they take less risks but the commonality as the intersection bubble you can see in their own activity and ways and spheres they are the leaders thought leaders action leaders and they are innovators so the question is if if anyone uh, who is in their a uh, professional life intends to um, uh, pursue the career in innovation they will have the opportunity to work 
uh, as the entrepreneur in a corporate organization, or if one wishes, can um, develop or found, find or create their own startups. So, so that is a that is a thing that can happen. Um, and hence, these skills are the uh, the hands-on skills and the other skills related to innovation and entrepreneurship is being rewarded uh, in corporate organizations, and therefore, um, one's possibility of uh, improving the prospect of um, for recruitment is also enhanced if someone is you know, taking this path. All right. I mean, then I um, quickly will uh, move on to the next slide. Uh, the slide is not moving. Exactly. Okay. So um, uh, these are the certain slides where um, I am, you don't have to read the you know uh, sentences. I am just explaining that basically through several uh, publications like KPMG, London School of Economics report and all, it is said that people feel in the corporate organizations that innovation is one of the most important um, activity uh, that is to be undertaken or focus is to be more on there. But at the same time, it shows that only 20% of the executives are happy with the innovation activities or uh, uh, the, the, the you know engagement in that. So. Um, there is a big gap exists that while people feel that innovation is one of the top activities in the corporate organizations, but very few actually practice it. So there is a great demand. So there is the scope for the young graduates, young uh, professionals who can uh, fill that gap and fit in that slot. As I speak, I just like to tell you that the definition of innovation, if you see here, is a um, um, kind of a um, collated definition. It is collated based on several definitions in this field. And um, from that, there are two things which are very important. For innovation and entrepreneurship, two things are very important. One is the idea, and two, execution of that idea. If only idea is not good enough, only execution is not good enough, the combination is the most important thing. And that combination will have to address a problem, which you may call a real challenge. A problem is a challenge. That's what I was um, speaking about a little while ago, uh, to uh, in response to Dr. Chakraborty's question that uh, um, that uh, how they can be commercialized into products. So um, uh, that I was telling that uh, first we have to see whether that product is solving any problem or it's addressing any pain point. That is called challenge, and it will uh, you know elevate the um, uh, value for the company as well as for the customer. So that is overall is the definition of innovation. So if you have if you have understood this, we have understood the the initial part of it. And then it would be helpful to us to understand. I am just uh, presenting a thing which um, uh, is to say that as we are discussing is here, like it is not only for BIT or IIT or anything. And in fact, if you look at globally, the top universities in the world, everywhere, starting from Stanford, MIT, Harvard, to, to name it, say, Georgia, uh, to Caltech, to uh, uh, Imperial College, everywhere. I mean, uh, so these innovation and entrepreneurship um, are becoming uh, practically a part of their curriculum. And I'm presenting here only those universities institute which have the curriculum. And it is, it is, it is only few uh, from the list you can understand that due to paucity of time and uh, I, I, I need not and I cannot uh, furnish all the names. Um, these are certain examples what kind of program that Stanford does, MIT does, Harvard does, UPenn does. So from that you can understand or say Caltech does or Lupin does, Caius does do. And, and all these things are there, equal, Princeton, a tune. So all these are there in the this thing who are actually in the um, you know academic and curricular activities and co-curricular activities of innovation and entrepreneurship. So it shows that it's global importance, uh, and therefore uh, the IITs, NITs, and other top uh, rung, uh, institutes in the country, as well as many engineering colleges, management colleges, they have started their you know um, innovation and uh, entrepreneurship related activities. IIT Kharagpur is a pioneer in India in this. That uh, first, it, it, the first uh, exclusive dedicated um, school on engineering entrepreneurship uh, was started at IIT Kharagpur, and there are uh, other other IITs and other institutes who are following suit. So, uh, and by and by, it is going to like say for example, I heard that BIT has its IIT and which is functioning very well. Um, Professor Shorkar was telling me uh, while we had several rounds of discussions uh, regarding this uh, talk of today. I mean, uh, that uh, these are all very important and useful things. Um, so 
uh, and and just just also also to show that uh, our education policy because some teachers are here so for um, who are my colleagues i consider and for their consumption i thought that uh, would just mention uh, i because i cannot go in the detail of it because nep is an open document nep uh, 2020 national education policy where you can see those who are the teachers from schools or bit or other colleges uh, would uh, appreciate that this nip is also uh, taking uh, note and uh, have included this um, uh, um, considerations for innovation and entrepreneurship in the uh, higher education institutes and schools and uh, colleges. So it's a national importance also is being uh, felt very much because it is now in the education policy document. Um, here I just would like to tell you the importance of education on entrepreneurship. Uh, I can show you from one of the you know research articles that I uh, retrieved is that uh, the curriculum um, attendance and extracurricular activity both contribute to entrepreneurial inspiration and that helps to create entrepreneurial mindset which is very important entrepreneurial mindset uh, means the people who are prone to do entrepreneurship they are um, uh, they are they are having a kind of mindset which is uh, quite conducive for innovation and entrepreneurial kind of undertakings one is that alertness to opportunity that whenever there is an opportunity they need to sense and can sense risk propensity they can take risk, but well, here I just would like to put a word of caution, particularly to the youngsters, that uh, when uh, we are talking about risk, it is not, you know, kind of, you know, um, gambling. It is kind of very well calculated risks. That uh, well, I mean, at the same time, it is also not uh, to follow the tradition, just uh, or legacy. So they are different. So they want to venture out. They want to do something new and. Risk is involved. Suppose a student, the young graduate today, uh, decides to uh, not sit for placement or forego a job offer and starts his uh, business. It means he is taking a risk, at least uh, according to the current level of the perception of our society. Many students or peers may also consider that as a risk. But then, unless that uh, risk propensity is there, entrepreneurship is not possible. So that is what the risk is. Uh, ambiguity tolerance, because there would be not very uh, clear definition or specification or guidelines of many things, but then within that, one has to work out a solution and which is at the ambiguity. And finally, that dispositional optimism, that means, yes, we can do it. It is an optimistic attitude. So that helps uh, to build their resilience that if they fall, they will get up and go again. So that is what is important. I thought that I will share with you because a lot many times people ask me, uh, can I become an entrepreneur? You know, kind of a question. So. Um, I do not know whether I would be uh, facing the same question here, but then I thought that before I, this question is raised, I would just point out this that, yeah, that's one important factor. Um, all right, so here are certain um, uh, points that uh, Peter Draka, if um, um, someone is acquainted with his name, would understand that he's a great management philosopher who said that uh, innovation is the most important tool in for entrepreneurship. And um, that uh, Monitoring of success for innovative opportunity, these are there, but I would not go into much into this now because my main focus will be on something. So I will skip some, some of the slides and would tell you that our focus today is the discussion is that, uh, that how and why, why should we uh, look at the uh, opportunity scope or uh, area of innovation and what is the market for it? As I say, that the problem exists in the market, and unless we address that market, nothing will move actually. As I said in the beginning, that people have a tendency to feel that their technology is the best or that is that is going to solve their problem. But very soon they come to realize once they, they convert it into product that there is no taker. So market is very important. And here, as the as many youngsters ask me, that what will you do if we want to become an entrepreneur? What is our what we should do? What do you suggest us? Well, it is not very easy to suggest anything because uh, individuals' preference varies. Uh, the uh, owner of McDonald's and owner of uh, Tesla, these are two different people, but uh, uh, both are successful in their own ways. So, uh, um, and Facebook is again yet another example. Uh, Microsoft is another example. So, uh, but therefore, therefore, it, it's entirely individual dependent. But at the same time, we need to also understand while that's true, but a market is necessary when i mean uh, 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 people from the from india or any emerging country approaches me 
I mean, I, I have um, heard from people from Brazil and they ask me questions uh, in the similar fashion and to students from China. I mean, I understand that, uh, that, that those are emerging economy countries and um, in the emerging economy country, you would understand that there is a huge population and huge customer base, which from the studies we see that it is about 5 billion people. In a world population of 7.8 billion now, as we speak, 5 billion resides in the emerging economy countries. So you can understand uh, that that's a big chunk of consumers and this, uh, uh, the, uh, for this market that is a frugal product or uh, affordable product, that market is of 6 trillion USD annually. Every year, the market size is 6, six trillion US dollar. So you can understand how big the market is, where, where there are two issues that uh, uh, the, the, it is uh, affordability is the issue, but it is not uh, uh, a very uh, cheap quality. It is a, it is a, it is a uh, you know, acceptable quality or good enough quality. And quality is a fulcrum here. That it is not that in uh, by losing on quality, we are cutting on cost, no. And uh, this is one important aspect of frugal engineering. And uh, trust me, there is also another very important uh, aspect that is coming up. Uh, that uh, it is not only for our country or emerging economy countries. If a product is good, then the same can be exported to the external market, the world market, the, even the Western countries, which is called reverse innovation. The innovation we know comes from the developed countries to the developing countries, but it's a reverse process that is from the developing countries if the innovation can move to the developed countries. It was a, earlier, it was a, or the traditional, it is known as a trickle down effect. That is, innovation is happening in the Western countries and it is trickling down to uh, emerging economy countries. But it is the concept of reverse innovation is trickle up. That means it will be developed in the lead market like India and the same will be transported, uh, exported. Now, uh, I can give you a example of the uh, GMAC um, electrocardiogram. That's a great example, which was actually developed in India and now it is also sold in the Western countries. So that's an example of reverse innovation. So, so if anyone is attempting to build uh, a startup or entrepreneurship, I mean, this is one area where affordability can be a focus and one can um, target to build products like that. And there will be a great um, market. In fact, 1.4 billion in our country itself. That's the population. So you can understand a large customer base of say uh, <laughs> 1 billion or so. So, uh, um, there is, uh, if, uh, if an affordable product, good product, um, and a product that really um, addresses the pains will be definitely be successful. Only thing, many products are not successful because all these aspects are not kept in mind while designing and developing the product. Um, so this is, this is uh, frugal engineering is called the resource constant pro um, uh, innovation. Here, I would just like to point out one thing, the frugal engineering, the term, was coined by Carlos Ghosn, who was the CEO of uh, uh, um, Renault Nation, that, uh, that uh, is a, 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 a Franco-Japanese company, French and Japanese, uh, or that's an automobile manufacturing company, and the CEO of uh, companies uh, was uh, Carlos Ghosn, who uh, uh, coined the term called um, uh, frugal engineering, that is the affordability engineering, affordable, creating affordable products with good quality, and he was actually uh, coined the term based being inspired with the work done by uh, Tata Nano. The car project that went uh, to uh, Renault Nishan, uh, they saw that it is a, a great piece of work. And, uh, and based on that, the term was created. So it has an Indian genesis. Um, frugal innovation, I have already explained. Uh, new or significantly improved products, uh, which is market ready using less uh, consumables and uh, resources on this thing at affordable cost. So um, you have understood. I have already explained this reverse innovation. I would not uh, need to go into the diagram because what is reverse innovation? I have told you. Here in the frugal engineering, there are several examples. In fact, the you have heard the Mangalaya on that mission to Mars uh, that was created by India. That I, I hope you all are aware that that was uh, accomplished at one tenth of the cost of MAVEN of uh, produced by NASA of USA. Um, that's also is a great example of frugal uh, engineering and innovation. I have told, already talked about Nano, but the Quid and Logan, other cars, are actually following suit. Uh, they are they uh, actually Tata Nano has not come in the market in a full-fledged manner, but the principle thrives, and they, those principles are now embraced by Quid and Logan, and they have brought out you know uh, uh, 
I would say low cost cars um, um, for the uh, developing uh, countries. Um, electrocardiogram, as I was talking about, um, ultrasonic scanner, X-ray machines to prosthetic lean. Uh, I hope you, many of you have heard Joypur prosthetic lean that they that they produce. I'll show you some of the photographs from that. You would understand this much better. This is the uh, uh, you know image of a ECG machine um, of General Electric Mac 400 is the model. Uh, which is actually a low cost uh, electrocardiogram machine. Um, it used all the available technologies so much so that instead of a computer for the printout of the electrocardiogram uh, reports and results, uh, which is presented in graphical form, they, they, they took the you know, um, uh, ticket printers from the bus stations, which actually is to print, that's all. So instead of computer, they have deployed a printer from the local bus terminal. So, so you can understand, so these are the approaches of bringing down the cost lower and you can see that on the left side uh, it is um, uh, the this uh, this uh, is the full scale uh, electrocardiogram machine and on the right side you can see that the electrocardiogram device that was developed in india for the local market which is actually now exported also to western market and for the emergency health centers they use it um here see the cost is also one tenth here it is ten thousand US dollar to the on the right it is one thousand US dollars so you can understand that this this these are certain kind of innovation which India uh, can afford and India should be able to uh, should address this and be able to accomplish this. Um, another example is that tractor uh, which is um, uh, I hope you are also have heard the Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute uh, and to the poor they have brought out a um, tractor which is uh, very low cost two lakhs of rupees and. Um, that that uh, name is uh, Krishi Shakti, and that is for harvesting and transportation of crops. And uh, so this is another example. Tata Nano uh, is the other example where they have made many changes to bring the cost low, like say single wiper instead of two smaller tires, um, and so many other things uh, features that brought the cost down. Um, here is the Siemens Multix uh, uh, X-ray machine. Uh, that is uh, where um, it is a floor mounted one. Uh, unlike the earlier structure, uh, those who have seen the old uh, X-ray system, which would have in the room uh, the long beams cross and across, along and across, in, uh, to carry that uh, um, the, the 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 main equipment is no longer required because it is floor mounted, and therefore the entire structural cost and building cost is uh, not there. So the cost has come down drastically. So that is also kind of affordable innovation example. Uh, Another example uh, uh, which has been uh, developed in India as well as in China are in the centers uh, by Siemens and that is fetal uh, heart monitor and they call it frugal smart products. Why, why smart products? This is how they explain what is smart. That is smart stands for simple, maintenance friendly, affordable, reliable and timely to market. Which is really half of the price or 50% cheaper than its original product. That is what the Siemens alone is doing. And the Siemens business alone is 200 billion US dollar annually. So you can understand the There is no sound. Ah, exactly. I found that a message came um, that to unmute. Now I think I am audible again. Now yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Please, yeah. please continue. So, 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 so the Jaipur, uh, Jaipur leg or Jaipur foot, uh, that is um, uh, the, you know, that uh, Dr. Shetty and uh, Master Ramchandra Sharma. These are two. Ramchandra Sharma is the technician and Dr. Shetty is a, um, um, this thing, orthopedic doctor. Who jointly developed you know this uh, prosthetic um, foot leg and this thing for the downturn? Here you see that boy is using that prosthetic leg and his life is changed. Without that leg, his life would be you know uh, you know very difficult. And the quality also is very good. That you can see on the right side. Uh, I do not know whether you can recognize this lady. Um, can you recognize this lady? Anybody who danced with a wooden leg? Ah, ah yes, quite right. Thank you. So that, uh, see, you understand that a professional dancer like her use this you know, prosthetic leg, leg and so understand the quote. So that is, those are the certain things. And rest um, uh, 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 are there also, um, uh, uh, like say, 
uh, infant womb or incubator designed by Stanford University. See, we are we are saying in India these are etc. But see, these are the things required for our uh, people, for Indians, and say the Stanford people, MIT people are developing it for us. So uh, we we can uh, do that very well ourselves. This is the example of a Chinese uh, X-ray machine, which is uh, costing uh, very low, rather, uh, in fact, um, uh, only a very small fraction. And because of that, you know, they have uh, actually wiped uh, the, certain companies away from the market, say, for example, Philips. Um, here you see that uh, this uh, MIT professor who is standing behind this is uh, that uh, DR lab, Global Engin Engineering Research Lab at MIT, that they are developing wheelchairs for our people. So here, actually, I'll tell you, is a great scope of entrepreneurship, innovation, and creating commercialized products. All right. So, and there are some, many other examples of a uh, short cool fridge, which doesn't require any uh, electricity, but it runs on battery and with a fan. Uh, full scope is uh, that perhaps you have hard $1 microscope, an Akas tablet, a Nokia 1100. When Nokia came in the market, many of the uh, uh, people of uh, uh, earlier times uh, would be able to tell you that that was a great phone in those days in the market. It was very robust, rugged, and cheap. So uh, these are certain examples of the product. And uh, uh, so here I would um, uh, rather uh, talk about uh, frugal design thinking that um, that it goes into the you know uh, the considers these areas that local, functional, affordable, manufacturable, manufacturable, sustainable, and user centric. These are the quality of Frugal. Now, it is a frugal design thinking has to take this steps. So uh, I would go into the design thinking uh, straight away, um, uh, taking that there are three major aspects that is uh, desirability, that is the human uh, aspect that is uh, um, that people would be liking a product, viability, that is the business oriented or economics oriented thing, and technical, that is feasibility oriented thing. When these three things intersect, when the three conditions get satisfied, there actually the innovation survives. So you see that three sets are cutting at this particular intersection point, intersection area, which is called the uh, effective innovation zone. And this is accomplished with the, you know, uh, the idea called design thinking, which has got five steps. Though five steps, though I have, uh, though it is mentioned like say empathize, define, idea, prototype, and test. But mind you, all these things are not always linear because back and forth happens because it is an iterative process. And this can be seen from here: empathize, define idea, prototype, and test, but you can see the dotted lines at any given stage, one can come back to the earlier stage uh, to check if uh, the thing it needs to be modified, if the result uh, that is expected not, not as, as expected, or it is below uh, the expectation or estimation. So let's like say at the time of testing, one might feel that, okay, the problem was not uh, properly defined, or more ideation uh, is necessary, etc. Or say during prototype, one might feel that the more ideation is necessary, or or from any stage to another stage, one will may go back and forth. So it is an iterative, and therefore it is not always so sequential and linear. Uh, empathizing, in short, is to understand. I will just go to that. That uh, what um, uh, people feel about uh, the product. I mean, uh, say for example, if one is carrying a heavy um, knapsack that uh, um, bag on the back, so if the strap is small, then there will be a pressure on the shoulder and it will give a and this pain would not be very comfortable expression so that can be seen from the frowning or if it is easy smiling so these are some things called empathize that you understand the problem empathizing means basically it is a way to understand the problem so once the problem is under understood then this question of defining that is analyze and synthesize the issues as collected from the problem uh, identification stage that is then defined clearly state what is the problem statement what is to be solved how might we okay how might we adjust this that is the definition i mean you need not uh, read the uh, this thing because i am giving you this summary because it is one hour session so um, i have to also see that it is uh, finished in time so but then i am giving you the substance or uh, extract of the um, slides that i have written uh, so once the defining is there then comes the idea now i hope you have heard about the brainstorming the brainstorming is a very nice ideation um, activity through which one can, okay, there are two stages of um, brainstorming. One is at the time of problem, it is called double diamond. One is the problem. When they, they, we are exploring the problem, we are uh, making a diversified thinking, and then we are actually identifying and defining and that's a convergence. That, okay, from so many possibilities, we are converging. Okay, this is the problem we exactly has defined. So it is a double diamond. 
divergent to convergent. Similarly, for solution, we can create a lot many possible solution alternatives, and then from that we can select the best alternatives. So that is also a divergent convergent thing. So two divergent and two convergent, uh, divergent convergent, divergent convergent. So it's called double diamond. Um, well, uh, then comes the prototyping. Many of you, I have heard that you are developing prototypes and all. So after the ideation, the prototyping is done to check, to validate, to tally where, where, what you actually intended to do, whether that is serving the purpose. And that finally you test, uh, uh, you know, uh, with the, your potential customer. So these are the things very carefully and systematically done. Then systematically and carefully, then there is a chance that your product will uh, not meet failures very easily um, because many checkpoints you are uh, very careful about. And um, so this five step design thinking is immensely helpful for the upcoming entrepreneurs and the, particularly those who are you know, designing and developing products. And based on that, the entrepreneurship is being created. So, um, well, I believe that uh, I'm about to touch the time limit. So I uh, end my discussion here and would expect certain questions if you have. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to ask oh, Saurabh, uh, sir, to conduct the Q&A. Uh, Pratima, uh, you uh, kindly allow uh, Dr. Dhan to continue for a few more minutes. Eh? I think... Uh, it is very interesting and it is beneficial for the students as well. Yes, sir. Uh, as the session is very much interesting and uh, interactive also. So please, uh, sir, please continue some more uh, minutes. No, I mean, uh, that's okay. That's what I'm saying. Yes, I mean, yes, uh, yes. Nah. So, 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 uh, uh, no, I mean, I mean, if there is a question I can take and I can continue based on that also. I mean, at least okay, if okay. I get to have, that would be, that would be more effective, I think. I mean, at least one question or two, if I, if you can read out and tell me uh, or etc. But in the meantime, I'll tell you it is uh, that uh, this design, design thinking, as I was mentioning, that I, 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 I uh, teach it at Kharagpur. I have taken the workshop in uh, various institutes on this. Um, uh, but I was uh, rather uh, very impressed when I heard that there are so many, uh, what is called this um, uh, incubators, TBIs, technology business incubators and accelerators. They came forward and they suggested, but they told me to, uh, they told me that they will have my session on this thing, design thing so that they feel is very, very useful and helpful. I can understand that because they, I'm sure, are facing the same problem or similar problem that many students are approaching them and uh, are uh, uh, telling that um, you know, how to be successful, what to do. Now, these, these my presentation actually have answered two things. If you have carefully noticed uh, what you should do and how you should do. These are two important questions. Uh, has been addressed here. What you should do, that I have told you what is the opportunities and scope, how you should do. So I have given just one example of the design thinking, which is very vital. So with this, I am sure that uh, people can initiate their activities. Yes. Sir, uh, I have some uh, points. Uh, yeah, please, 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 yes. please, Professor Shortcut, please uh, go ahead. We have um, arranged some hackathons and brainstorming sessions. And um, I think, what uh, happens in those hackathons and brainstorming sessions? Uh, students may come up with certain ideas. There may be uh, very good ideas, maybe not very good ideas, not so good ideas. All types of ideas come up, but um, uh, they only end up in getting some certificates that this is a good idea and that that's there is a complete stop there. Uh, do you offer any prize money? I I, I would like to. Uh, no, no. But currently, do you offer any prize money? No, no, no. Okay. no. Please, right. please, 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 no, please. No, no. No, 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 no. I am asking for the hackathons. Do you offer the students some prize money? That's my question. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, sometimes we do. do yes, 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 yes. So if the answer is yes, which I suspected to be yes, you know that many students will be inclined. All right, fine. If there is some money and a certificate, why not give it a try? I mean, this, there may not be. See, the thing is that you would find that many late entry. Suddenly, somebody would say, no, 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 there is a thing. Let us go and do that. It may not be a very sustained effort or if uh, activity, but there are certain groups. I'm telling you, there are certain groups right. who work throughout the year or for a very long time. They are out to do so. So there would be always some group, some people who would be content with certificates. Uh, so be it. I mean, that is what the mm, society is all about. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, this is in every sphere of life. But at least we have to see at least 10% of the students, those who are coming in hackathon or any kind of such competition or whatever, at least 10% of students um, should be able to do some, uh, produce some good work. That is, that is, that is the most important thing. Say if 10 students are coming, at least one should yes, be good. Yes. I mean, if that is happening, then I think it is fine. Because after all, you know, the students, uh, they, they always would like to, uh, you know, 
I would say accumulate certificates. I mean, that is that is I've seen. I mean, uh, when I was a student, I also have done one or two such things. May not be on entrepreneurship in our time. There was not uh, things of this nature, uh, but on other things. Um, um, <laughs> so, okay, fine. I mean, uh, yes, I mean, a uh, hundred percent conversion is not possible. So you know, with a very pragmatic expectations and estimation, I think if 10% to 20% is doing good job, we have reasons to be um, more or less happy. Yes, actually, we have to drive those efforts huh. to the next level. Right. So to the prototype right. or whatever. See, actually, yeah, yeah. So, so what happens, what happens, I have seen if in your institution, if two or three groups are doing well and they are getting publicity in the newspaper or uh, other forums that they have done something good, good innovation or something, then that is the best inspiration uh, for the rest of the students. So that's what I'm saying. If out of 10, if two are good or one is good, that also I'm happy about. Actually, one or two would create the buzz and that would actually um, resonate with the other students and many will then come forward. That's how it happens. What amount is very, very, I would say, uh, strong um, communication channel or communication mode. So, so sir, I have a question. Can I ask you, sir? Please do. Sir, uh, my name is Ajinta Palit. I'm in the uh, faculty of EC department. Uh, sir, you told that uh, design thinking process is a nonlinear process. Uh, so, why it is called nonlinear, sir? Nonlinear is this, nonlinear in the sense, I mean, not sequential. I mean, that's what I meant. It's not sequential that I have said uh, empathize, define, idea, prototype, test. Okay. But then I'm saying that it is not just a one way route. Like, say, um, like say, if I say, okay, if you do laundry, what will you do? You will wash the clothes. Uh, uh, the, after the uh, cloth is washed, you uh, dry it up and then press it. It is absolutely sequential. You cannot do other way around. You cannot press the cloth and then wash it. No. But here, so it is sequential. Similarly, here it is not sequential. That means at, from from, um, uh, uh, from a later stage, uh, you would come back as a process of iteration to a pre previous stage to redo and again follow and go back to the next stage. You understand what I mean? That if there will be a loop. It is not always that one way, not only sequential. That's what I meant. Sir, one more question. Uh, yes. That you told that uh, extracurricular activity can help in the uh, that uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, inspiration. So, what is no, that extracurricular? Extracurricular related to entrepreneurship and innovation only. But it is not sports. I am saying that uh, when suddenly somebody will say, "Okay, I am playing carom, I am playing chess, or something," so I become entrepreneur. No, no, extracurricular in the entrepreneurship and innovation domain. I meant. But I said curricular, curricular, and extracurricular. Extracurricular means say, uh, say, see, this is this is one who is organizing this, who is doing this. Who, who are the enthusiasts uh, in, listening to this discourse uh, right now, or will be taking notes and prepare a presentation based on this, or say write up based on this, and will publish that write up in that uh, your website or someplace. So those are you know the extracurricular activities, and someone is uh, you know doing some startup etc. Um, or uh, doing some you know, proof of concept etc. So those are those may not be curricular, but they are extracurricular that they they are doing as a, a product testing. So some technology they have developed or proof of concept they are testing. So those are all extracurricular activities. They not be part of your uh, curriculum yet. Sir, another interesting question. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, you are welcome. Another interesting question has come up. Um, some Mr. Joy Prakash Sharma. Mm. Uh, he has asked to compete. We either have to come up with a totally new technology, or what are other options? No, 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 no. Don't always go for new technologies. If you have developed any new technologies already, that's quite fine. Then you can you can make use of it. But don't always go for you know assimilating new technologies because new technologies are not as it is proven yet. They may they may throw up certain problems already. So some technology has come up and if you are just putting it in your product, you are uh, running a big risk because they suppose you have assimilated 10 such technology and each risk, if you count that if this technology may fail, that, uh, the new technologies are not proven. No, So it is, it is a very high risky proposition. So have a balance. If you have developed a good uh, technology it's, or something, it's, something. It's better to improve it in a ah, in incremental manner or say, uh, in incremental manner or say you can use a very established as I gave you many examples, people have used uh, existing technologies, available technologies, and you know, made wonderful products. So no harm. I mean, not necessarily you have to come up with, see, there are two aspects. One is the technology development and this product development. So you not necessarily will have to do the technology development to become an entrepreneur. You can, uh, it is called bricolage. Actual term is bricolage, where you can pick up technologies from uh, different areas or different you know, sources, and you can combine in your product. That's perfectly all right. I get several examples here itself. Uh, the Chinese X-ray machine is one example for that. They brought that uh, uh, from their parent company, which actually was um, uh, you know, uh, procured for some aerospace activity, but they have used it for their X-ray machines. Where, and by that they brought the cost uh, so down, uh, because, uh, okay, the only thing, uh, uh, let me tell you that, that, that uh, machine that the Chinese um, company made 
is not a versatile machine, but then it is only for chest X-ray. Other machines can do all X-rays, but this can do a chest X-ray. But if you see that out of the total number of X-rays, 50% are done for chest. So you can understand the 50% problem they are solving at one fifth or one tenth of the cost. So that's itself is a big achievement. So that's what I'm saying. So not necessarily you have to always go for the, uh, you know, um, immediate or most current or most contemporary technology, not necessary. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Sir, I mean, um, uh, my name is Madhusudan Demnath hmm. uh, from BIT physics teacher. Hmm. Sir, my question is, you have mentioned the nonlinear process. Sir, my question is, is there any mathematical model to express this nonlinearity? No, 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 no. I mean, uh, no, 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 no. It is, it is, it is not, not uh, the, it is not in the mathematical sense. This, uh, if I say that example, I have given the sequence. Uh, see, it's a sequential process, linear sequential process. That I gave the example of uh, this thing, uh, washing, drying, and uh, um, pressing. So, I mean, if you can have a mathematical form of this, so you normally <laughs> like to say P1, P2, P3, or PI, PI stands for 1, 2, 3. I mean, that is a mathematical expression, but that is not intuitive. But this is not a nonlinear function or linear function or anything like that. It is not a function. Okay, thank you, sir. So if there are no questions, can I ask one? Yes, please, by all means. Yeah, uh, Dr. Dhan, uh, yeah, I have seen that uh, uh, you have talked about uh, say, uh, some universities from e USA, uh, Europe, uh, with regard to the innovation, mm. but uh, there is no place for India. Do, do you think so? That okay, India is no, not no, 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 no. I have mentioned also India. You, uh, but, yeah, but you I, mentioned no, about Nano and no, 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 also. I, no, no, no. I have mentioned in that list. If I can go back, I'll show you. I also mentioned that Adi Kharapur is the first in the country to start a program on exclusive love uh, as uh, Indian entrepreneurship school. I said all that. But I, only thing that yes, uh, true that. Um, as I say, there is, is a, that's why I say that it is a reverse innovation. See, the uh, traditional innovation always thought that it would be innovated in the Western world and then it would be trickled down to the you know developing world. That was our notion for, say, look at anything, the refrigerator, fridge, mobile phone, name anything. You will find that it was innovated first in the Western world and then it came to India. But now, now I understand with uh, in recent years, so maybe for the last five, 10 years, as we see, India is getting uh, ready for uh, its, you know, I would say, journey for entrepreneurship. And you know, the over the last uh, decade, there are uh, hundred unicorns created. That's a that's a great achievement. So, well, I mean, India didn't start many things in time. We all know that because it was what is the market. What is the market of Indian products in the outside? Means, do you have any idea about that? How how India is coming up with the market? No, my market is see. I, that's okay. Just just I will I will tell you. That um, India, as you know, uh, was a protected economy yeah. only a few decades ago. There, uh, mm, that uh, companies, even the companies, they always felt that uh, to, they, they were all risk averse and they would not uh, do innovation and research and development and all. What they would do is they would buy technology from foreign country and sell it in uh, fabricate and sell in India. And they, that, that was uh, okay for them because uh, the Indian uh, market was protected. Say, for example, uh, imagine. Uh, I do not know, uh, but I hope that you have seen the car ambassador. And I also feel that you have some experience of uh, knowing that uh, at, there was a time when if you book an ambassador, you, the delivery will be after one year or six months. And if, if one would get that in three months, would celebrate that so early receive of a ambassador car. Did you, are you of the time? Are you, do you know about that ambassador thing? Ambassador car? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Huh? So, so, so now, now that is what India was. So what is the use of innovation? If there was no other car to come in the country, ambassadors and fiat, there were two cars to be sold. Yeah. Why and why, why? Why should someone invest uh, in this? I mean, because there is an easy, easy business that buy something and sell it in India because there is no competitor. Nothing is allowed. So India never uh, um, actually uh, Indian companies never had to really go for that competition, mm -hmm. and so the thrust on R and D and innovation was was not really there. I'm telling you. I mean, um, uh, so naturally. Uh, when they were exposed to this situation, uh, it uh, actually had a shock. Today, if I ask you uh, what mobile phone you use or what refrigerator you use or what TV you use at home. So being an Indian, you would find that all the names that you would be telling that those are foreign foreign companies, at least in 95%, 99% cases. So now 
you are being Indian is buying foreign products. And now if you say that, oh, now we have to sell it. So it needs a preparation. So India is now in that phase of preparation. And I'm quite sure if this impetus is uh, there for, and it is, it's not to you, I'm saying general Indian population. Look at the people who are buying cars. Yeah. What cars do they buy? Do all, everybody buys Maruti Suzuki. Uh, that also is not fully India. Yeah. Uh, look at the Japanese tech. So, so, uh, so that is the present condition. Now, the Indian companies, Indian companies to overcome this problem. And now if you ask how to overcome this, so should we take trace back of this 20, 25 or 30 years or 35 years of this thing of not doing innovation? No. Because the time has elapsed and already technology is known uh, in several fields in the market, India also has a certain advantage, which is called leapfrogging. So we don't have to trace back the entire thing, but we have to see that what we can leapfrog on. By, say technology, which is say two, three, four, five years old. If we can prepare something based on that technology, we can leapfrog. That is what is needed now. And what India possibly will have to, and being, uh, they are doing it now. That is what the uh, way out. I mean, as I can see. Because there cannot be, you know, uh, other options. Because India is not a very, very resource-rich country, and so that's why, that's why I raise the resource constant, constant innovation, that frugal engineering, frugal innovation kind of things, which for Indians will be very, very useful and suitable. And young people who are trying to develop something in a resource constant manner, they can also build that. And there is the future. And this way only, I, I'm sure that India will be able to compete uh, in the world market. Yeah. That's the. Uh, that's yeah. All. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to ask Professor Devlina Barikma, convener of IICBIT, to present a token of appreciation to the speaker. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, I have one question before uh, going uh, to that. Uh, please, sir, uh, can, you, can I ask? Yes, please. Uh, so, uh, I am uh, faculty of computer science uh, IT uh, in Bengal Institute of Technology. Uh, I have discussed several times with uh, first year students. First year students have uh, different ideas, uh, innovative ideas, but uh, they actually don't know how to implement because uh, being one first year student, they don't know the actual uh, technology, uh, how to implement those ideas, but they have ideas. So can they start uh, uh, some project or some business uh, aspect? Can they start uh, after that? Uh, they can learn simultaneously. Is it possible? Or no, no, what is no, the right process? No, no, Learn I'm, the see, technology as a whole and then uh, begin. No, I, I see, one thing is that if someone is really mm, uh, interested or fascinated um, to do uh, something innovative, etc., um, that's very good. But uh, immediately, I would not suggest that they should immediately you know, start a private limited company. What they really need to do is that what they think is a good idea, they should... Uh, now everything is available. Everything is there in the you know, net. So one can explore whether what they are thinking is uh, already available in the market or is similar technologies available in the market or anything is patented like that. So that would, that would help them because many students I see, they do, they don't do enough research. They think uh, exactly this is, this, this is, a, this is a solution. I have read it in a magazine and I felt uh, that's very good. Uh, uh, so that, that is not the approach is that, okay, fine. The idea may be really good and uh, no point in, you know, um, you know, discouraging them, but then uh, we need to also tell them that find out from the net or some sources, other sources, or from journals or periodicals or whatever sources, they can also visit some customer and client or something to get more information. And if they go, no, 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 whatever you're doing already, that is there, this company is, uh, uh, you know, um, selling it or supplying. It. So, so, um, so they are, that is very important. So what they are trying to do, what is the merit of the thing? That's exactly I'm telling you repeatedly that what they are trying to do is to be explored. And that's why the importance of design thinking is increasing by the day. And uh, that's that's really, really necessary because otherwise students don't don't always look for the pains or gains. Well, well, how do you, how will you mitigate pain or how you would improve the customer gain? They feel that, okay, we have got a technology now they look for the problem. They have the technology. Now I have the technology, I look for the problem. Where can I use this uh, technology? That's not the approach is that, that first you look for the problem. You can do jointly that, okay, if it's a technology where it can fit you. That also is okay, fine. But the problem has to be genuine. Problem has to be impactful. Otherwise, it has no future. Unless there is a problem, there is no future. Absolutely not a future. I'm telling you very candidly, if it is not solving a problem, if it is not solving a pain point, or if it is not contributing to anybody's gain or customer's gain, this product, however technologically sophisticated or whatever it is, it has no future. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So they should be cautioned. That look, yes, I mean, they, our job as mentors or faculty is that please check all these things or 
if they come to you, you said this, give, come back with this four or five answers to these questions. I am raising. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Sir, in that, several, uh, yes. Several um, uh, professors from other, other institutes have also joined us, uh, joined us this uh, in the seminar. Yes. Um, are there any questions from you, sir? If anyone um, is interested, please uh, come up with any questions. Uh, I see Dr. N. V. Jagannanda and uh, several other uh, professors uh, from several other I mean, uh, Dr. P. K. Panigrahi, uh, Dr. Shahu. Please come ahead and uh, put forward your questions. I mean, I have, there are, I believe, some school teachers. I would expect at least one or two questions from the school teachers that would help me understand their requirement. I mean, if, if yes, they're please, interested. Please. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. yes, please. Yeah, uh, sir, I am Dr. Vibhu Abhushan Panda from GIT University, Gunapur, Odisha. Sir, I have a question that uh, is there, uh, should be there any modification in the curriculum or in the syllabus which we are teaching to our students so that uh, the entrepreneurship and the innovations could be announced? Should, uh, should be there any rules or should be there any uh, hard and uh, rules like that so that uh, the uh, entrepreneurship and the innovation, that particular part that, that will be announced? You know, actually, see, Debra, are you are you from an autonomous in, institute or it, you belong to some yeah. uh, university? We are university. Oh, Chacha. So you are university, but you are from university itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you are university, I believe you have uh, more liberty, I suppose, that you can change your curriculum, etc. Right? But if you are teaching university, then uh, then I think uh, are you a unitary university or affiliating university? And are there colleges under your university? So, uh, we are affiliated. Sir. No, no. Are you are you from a college or from your university? Uh, I am from an university, sir. We are uh, affiliated to an state university, and uh, we have our own. Anyhow, I'm, I'm just uh, no, no, no. I am telling you, if huh. your university has a provision to um, provision that you can open um, a curriculum or start a curriculum, one subject or something, um, that will be fine. I mean, uh, but then oh, see, the thing is that um, um, the but it should be done in a balanced way that um, the, uh, actually the students for which uh, they have come to say for mechanical or electrical or civil engineering or whatever courses are there or physics or whatever. Um, uh, it should not be that everybody is doing that. And so therefore the, there is a big cuttlement in those course areas because there may be some faculty who uh, may feel that those courses are necessary. But then yes, but while complying all these requirements, if um, one or two courses is included, I think that would be very, very useful. That is in the curriculum part I'm talking about. In fact, I know, yes. I mean, I, 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 I was a, you know, um, I would say expert in a committee at IIT Jodhpur also, where uh, they have started the one um, minor, they call it minor um, uh, in uh, entrepreneurship for their engineering graduates. So that way also it is possible that apart from the course curriculum, et cetera, they are uh, completing few courses and they are earning a minor, uh, which is for which they are getting a certificate. So. Those things are possible. Only thing, why should you do that? Why your college or university should do that is important because um, I believe college and university more and more will have to do because placement uh, is not, um, I would say, is hundred percent in most of the universities and somewhere it is pretty bad. So um, there must be a way out, and for the way out, we need to really explore this avenue. And uh, so this avenue, if it is strengthened, then. Uh, that dependency only on placement will reduce and that is for the benefit of all, for the society, for the student, for the college, for everyone. For the, I mean, guardians or parents are not very favorable, I know, initially, because uh, the societal pressure is there, but then by and by it will go. But the kind of thing that was in our time when we graduated from colleges, um, we know that uh, the, the people would look at a businessman and now uh, people would look at an entrepreneur uh, from a different, uh, with a different viewpoint. So there is an improvement, certainly. Here people uh, feel glamorous saying that I have, I have created a startup. It is glamorous, which was not there, say, 30 years ago. <laughs> Hello, sir. Uh, this is Mr. Shurito Das. I am a faculty from Bodhicharya uh, School. I just want to ask, would you be kind enough to just explain me frugal engineering again and uh, who coined it? And another question I have, uh, that is, what are the uh, four features in uh, entrepreneurship mindset? You, can you just, uh, would you be kind uh, enough? No, 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 it's not kind of, because I have already discussed that. Uh, if, 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 were your connection not there? 
Yes, sir, it was there. But I just want to, uh, what, what is actually frugal engineering? Uh, frugal engineering what... is that I, I, I already have discussed. I mean, um, uh, I would I, I like to answer new questions, but uh, if I have to repeat that, then it is not much fun. But then I'm telling you, it is uh, the basically to create affordability with good enough quality of products, in short. Because, uh, you know, um, new questions are always invited, but repetition is not. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. And this, uh, Professor Dhan, uh, I was just wondering, wh what exactly is the uh, position of patenting in this uh, scenario? Position means? Um, do you have to go for patent first and then go for, um, uh, the, 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 you know, um, go, uh, for some uh, startup or? Oh, yes. I mean, if you, if you, you okay, 100%. If you, if you have the technology and if you want to go for a startup, my advice is always go for the patent because patent is not only the safeguard, but it also is a very important thing because the uh, investors, VCs, that uh, venture capitalists or angels would always ask if you, they know if you have a patent, then your market valuation goes up. They will invest, invest more at uh, lower equity because if they invest, they will ask for equity. So that there you can have the bargaining edge. The startup can have the bargaining edge. Right. Of course, I always advise if, if this technology is good, uh, then you immediately patent it. At least in India, you patent it. Because the, you know, patenting in the countries uh, are very expensive, right? particularly in countries like US and all. Uh, which is very expensive and uh, many people cannot do that. But if they feel that they will be selling in India primarily, at least at least that they should do. That's a very big safeguard. And investment is easier. Uh, any other questions from uh, other uh, guests? Uh, I think uh, several uh, persons are there. From but I have not got any uh, this thing this thing from any school. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want not to school. I mean, what kind of problem? Because I have not interacted with school before uh, like this. And so, I, I mean, I would like to know, I mean, what exactly is the problem or how how they intend to inspire or motivate. I mean, just one or two opinions if I could get. I mean, I deal with the engineering college students mostly or say management students mostly. So please, if there are any uh, <laughs> okay. um, All uh, right, I mean, faculties in the uh, schools present here, please come up with your questions. So we can expect in uh, future lectures. <laughs> Maybe. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Let us close. Okay. I think it is done. Yes, uh, I, I don't think uh, Professor Dan uh, should be given some rest at least. <laughs> no, <it's okay. laughs> he has just come up with, and then just uh, straight away he joined us uh, without taking any uh, rest. No, that's so our the anchor. Regular. Where is our anchor? Um, Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Tan, for being with us in this webinar and make this session inter interactive and wonderful. I would like to ask Professor Devlina Barikram, convener of IICPIT, to present a token of appreciation to the speaker. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Dan. This is a small token of appreciation from our side. Please accept this. I have accepted it. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it is my always an honor for me. And it was a very nice interactive session. And our students are also excited about the entrepreneurship. So I hope we will get support from you in the coming days. And we will be having our entrepreneurship sale as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Dan. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now, I would ask Dr. Tapan Kumar Pal, Vice President of IICPIT, for a vote of thanks and also request Professor Sovan Nandi to share the feedback link in the chat window. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, on the behalf of Institute Innovation Council of VIT, I want to extend a really healthy vote of thanks to the speaker, Professor Pranav Kumar Dhan. Uh, from Rajendra Mishra School of uh, Engineering Entrepreneurship, IIT Kharagpur. And he's uh, given very lucid uh, explanations about how the design thinking and affordable innovations can be carried out for successful, big, to become a successful entrepreneurship. And I think the students are very much uh, beneficial for, their, uh, for, uh, for his uh, very interactive talk about that. Uh, I am sure that uh, this will really encourage the student to learn about uh, about the topics. And I think I also request uh, Professor Dan to give a 
physical uh, kind of uh, interactions with our people uh, as well as our all the icbi team we are also thankful to our principal sir professor nc ghosh for his presence and share his valuable thought about that i would also like to give thanks to all the, our faculty members of various department and all the coordinators and membership of iic mic self driven activity innovation and incubation cell and social media cell and entrepreneurship cell also uh, finally i would uh, like to thanks all the participants including our uh, mentee mentees uh, institute as also i am also thanks to all the uh, student who are mainly participating in this seminar so in this way i again thanks to all for being with us thank you i i think uh, professor dan uh, you should take those uh, all those thanks with a little bit of caution because you have to be uh, there for several other um, seminars here yeah. <laughs> this is only the first one <laughs> yes okay. dr dan uh, you are very wonderful tell about uh, what are yes. the design thinking and i think the students are very beneficial about that yes okay so the most of the first year student they don't have any idea about uh, what are the what are the types uh, design thinking what are the way to Yeah, yeah, becomes yes. a successful product formation. So I think it is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Our chat box is flooded with so much comments, and everyone is appreciating for the session. Thank you so much, sir, for your great. Well, thank you, thank you very much. It is heartening to know that it has helped some of the students. That that's the takeaway. Thank you, thank you for inviting. Thank me. you. Um...